YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. And in this video, we have another episode of NFL questions from subscribers. What questions from subscribers is is a series where you can ask any NFL question you want to based off of any NFL team, and we answer it in a video just like this. If you want to be a part of NFL questions from subscribers, then you just send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. And we'll possibly answer your question in a video just like this. Or for the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. Speaking of the patrons, shout out to the team. Keep it clean, patrons. We appreciate y'all. We love y'all. Thank you for supporting the channel. Just that much extra. And team, keep it clean as a whole. This is a very special episode because we have a very special guest joining us again. And that is DT Vids. First question on this episode came from my guy, Stephen K. He said, hey, man, nice to meet you. I'm a Baltimore native, but just moved to Nashville a few years ago, directing country, indie, and Americana music videos. Though in Nashville now, I'm still a diehard Ravens fan. I love what you're doing, how often you post content, and wish the segments were even longer. Appreciate it, Stephen. Uh, I just feel like I had a few things I would that would be good to speak about, whether or not they're hot takes or not. Anyways, take them, leave them. Just thought they'd be interesting topics to hear you speak about. And figured if I had these questions, maybe other people did too. Number one, our linebackers. I don't know if we have been spoiled in the past, but let's be honest. Bowser isn't the greatest, and neither is LJ Fort. And Queen, I feel, is inconsistent. I don't think we have great cover linebackers, and that will be a weak point in our defense. Um... So I, we'll just go one by one. So he said Bowser isn't the greatest. That's number one. Um, with Bowser, I think with the Ravens, I think they were, when they re-signed him, I think they're banking on his potential because Bowser, no, he's not the greatest right now, uh, but he showed flashes here and there, and now he'll have a bigger role. He, he showed flashes in a limited role, but now he'll have a much bigger role moving forward uh, so he can, we can really see who Bowser is. And he signed to his deal is like super cheap. I think it's like what is it, five point five mil per year, something like that, some crazy low. Um, but he's really he's a really good coverage cover linebacker. Yeah. So the the problem that you were talking about right there in Bowser, he he's he's good with that. Yeah. Now pass rush, we're gonna see. I don't I don't think he's a bad pass rush at all. He could get better, but again, I think Ravens are really banking on potential uh, when it comes to Tyus Bowser. Um. Uh. Uh, yeah, as you said, Ty Bowser's he's a pretty good cover linebacker. I don't I don't I don't know. Uh, I guess when he says he's not that great, yeah, he's not that great. He hasn't really had the opportunity to um showcase how great he could be. Oh, but as, great. We, as we saw last year with that one hand uh, one handed interception <laughs> that he had, what is it? Baker, Baker, I guess Baker, I guess Baker? the Browns, yeah. Yeah, he shot out in the uh in the flats and like a diving one handed catch. Like you don't really see linebackers doing that and that showed a lot that was like whoa like okay you have some range and he's not as bad as a cover uh linebacker i i, I think that he's trying to make him to be um and but also with harrison i don't we we have some we have some good cover linebackers i actually think harrison is actually a better um coverage linebacker than patrick queen he is and, and people don't realize that because he's so massive. You know, he's 6'3", 6'4", 250 pounds. But coming out of the draft, he was known for being a very, very, very good coach linebacker. Mm -hmm. He's just so big that people overlook it. I mean, he swings his hips. He has a good uh, 40 time as well. People had, he almost ran faster than Patrick Queen. People had to realize. And he's like double Patrick Queen. Mm -hmm. So don't, over, don't overlook his coverage skills because of his size. He's a very good uh, coverage linebacker, uh, Harrison, that is. Right. Um, Fort, Fort, Fort was pretty serviceable. He's not, you know, he's not your Pat, Patrick Willis or, or those guys, but he came in and done very good in my opinion. I'm not, I don't, um, I guess people have different opinions and that's, that's understandable. Um, what was the last, uh, forget the last. Day. Yeah, Queen. Yeah. But yeah, Patrick, Patrick Queen. Queen, he said, Patrick, yeah, Patrick Queen was a little inconsistent. I mean, He's a, he's a young player. He's still trying to learn the game. You know, he's long. He, he's long. You get you get that with, you know, young players, especially young middle linebackers, mm -hmm. because it's like learning, you know, a foreign language when you come into the NFL. And, he, and remember, he's only been playing. He only started one year at LSU as the middle linebacker. Right. You got to realize that he did. He he didn't start. 
So that's one year at LSU as starting as the middle linebacker. Then you get drafted high, you come into the NFL, and you're starting for Wink Martin Hill, <laughs> who has one of the most complex defenses you ever imagined. So I kind of like kind of give Patrick Quinn a little slack, you know, yeah. and see what he does this year. I think he'll be a lot better and a lot faster this year, even though he had a very good rookie year. I had a very good rookie year. That's true, because with, with Patrick Queen, yeah, like you said, he only started one season at LSU, um, and, and going to the NFL, it's a big enough jump already, but going to the NFL and going to the Ravens as a defensive player and becoming a starter your rookie year at inside linebacker, right. if pressure ain't the word to describe it, then I don't know what is. <laughs> right. uh, so for what Patrick Queen was able to do last year, I know he, got, he started off hot and he got a little quieter toward the end of the season. Um, and, and I think his biggest struggle was in pass coverage, where there was just some things where he would look out of place. Um, but again, something to consider. And I myself, a lot of times, I, I forget about it a lot. Last year was not a normal year for the NFL. Last offseason was not a normal offseason for the NFL. So these rookies that came in the league last year, it, may, it was that much harder for them because there was really no offseason uh, for rookies last season. That is and really no offseason for, for anybody. So for the, the fact that Patrick Queen did what he did and did how he did in the Ravens defense, I got to give him his credit for that. So I, I expect even better things for Patrick Queen uh, this season moving forward. Now with LJ Fort, he's not the fastest. He's not the strongest, but his smarts, man. Right. This guy, his smarts make up for anywhere where he may, I don't want to say lack athletic ability, but his smarts make up for where he may not be the strongest or fastest, anything like that. Um, whenever he would be on the field, he finds himself at the right place at the right time. Uh, you see with the, the interceptions and even go back two years ago too, where there was one game, where I think it was against the Browns. They just kept taking interceptions away from LJ Ford because <laughs> he kept making play that same game. But right. He um ever since he came on the Ravens, man, he has made a significant impact, be it through special teams, be it on defense. Uh, so LJ Ford, he's not asked to come in and be flying around or anything like that, but he's a right place, right time kind of linebacker. So moving forward, I, I was I was hurt when they cut him this offseason, but then when no, they brought not. him back, I was like, oh, okay, thank goodness. No, not. Um, now his next question, uh, he said, "Do you think our offensive line this upcoming year is better?" than what it was two years ago with Marshall Yonder. So do you think our offensive line is better now or was it better two years ago when we had Marshall Yonder? Uh, <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good question because I like to see players on the field first. Mm -hmm. to, to actually like give my total analysis on that. Um, if, but if I'm just going to just throw it out there, Yes, Marshall Yonder is just one player. So, I mean, he was great at the position that he played. And, you know, he did make life a lot easier for a lot of people. But if mm -hmm. I'm just speaking on who we have brought in, um, we have with Zietler. Mm -hmm. um, we have the guard, Ben Cleveland, who I feel will start. And he was with all SEC at with right guard. He only gave up, like, what, three sacks? And like three thousand some snaps or something like that. Yeah, so that's crazy. a good sign. Um, we also brought in Villanueva, who is who is better than what people actually think. And so, so actually, yeah, I'll, I'll actually say we will because to to go into a soliloquy, uh, Villanueva is coming to an offense that he's familiar with. Remember when he was in college, he played for Army. Oh yeah, they run the yeah, same right. kind of style offense that we're going to run. So he's going back to his roots. He's going back to what he knows. So he's yeah, going to always be a, a step point. ahead of the defense because our offense already makes our offensive line jobs a lot easier. Mm -hmm. So they're because they're always going to be a step ahead because the defense has to first wait, read in, then react on defense. That allows our offensive line to get a step on you already. So their job comes in a lot easier in this type of offense. Mm -hmm. You have Zeke who's already a proven guard. Right. So we already know he can play. Ben Cleveland is not um is does not prove on the NFL level, uh -huh. but in college he was all SEC. Um, you have your Brandon Stanley back as well. We have to see if he's going to be healthy. So if I'm coming off the top of my head, I'll say, with the we have the potential to be better than when we had Marshall Yonda because we've at, we feel we feel some pieces. I must say, I I, I think. And I don't like to do this, but I actually think Ben Cleveland is going to be—he's going to be that guy. <laughs> he, he, I mean, he, he just, 
he's like he's one, he's like one of my I don't say man crushes. Like he's just the it factor. When you see him and then you watch him play, it's like he has everything that the NFL needs. How did he fall to us? How did we get him in what the third round? Like it's, I just don't understand how that happened. And our biggest issue was rushes up the middle. Mm -hmm. Lamar Jackson could never step up in the pocket. He has to always run outside the pocket. He could he usually never could step up and you know go through his throw because mm -hmm. the pocket was in his face. All that stops with Ben Cleveland. <laughs> All that stops with Ben Cleveland. So I actually mm -hmm. think we'll be better than we were, I guess, Marshall Yonders last year. So yeah, I actually think we will. I'm going out mm -hmm. on the limb. Going out on the limb, but yeah. <laughs> see, I don't know. I, I I don't I can't say that I think we'll be better than we were two years ago with Marshall Yonder in 2019, but I do certainly like I feel 150% confident that we will be better than we were last year. Oh. Um, and, and that's hugely important in this whole equation because that was the Ravens' biggest problem literally from beginning of the season in week one. Because I remember Ravens, there was a play where Ravens were on the goal line in week one. And I think they handed it off to Patrick Ricard. But yeah. I think Ogan Joby came in, pow, yeah. knocked it out, fumble. Pressure, oh, interior good. pressure, like you were just talking about. Mm -hmm. um, so it, offensive line has been a problem from beginning to the end. And, and I, um, one reason, I, I can't say that they're going to be better than they were uh, two, two years ago with, right. in 2019 is because, like you mentioned, Ronnie Stanley, we got to see how he bounces back. Hopefully everything will be good to go. There won't be any problems, any setbacks, anything like that. But it's just a wait and see type of thing. Mm -hmm. Now, this, uh, <laughs> this next one, um, number three. He's oh okay never mind I read it wrong at first okay he said I thought it said everyone says we should and he was opposed to it but he's saying everyone says we should not go after Julio because we drafted two receivers and added Sammy Watkins why wouldn't we trade Watkins and a draft pick to get a less injury prone and better talent I honestly feel if we add Julio Jones we would be Super Bowl contenders easy there is no way the Chiefs or Browns will be able to stop a legendary run game then guard Julio Bateman and Hollywood. Brown, oh, and Mark Andrews. So I mean, <laughs> there you go. We ain't even got a good. I mean, y'all can check the previous video uh, for that. But I mean, yeah, man, I'd be all for Julio. Now I don't even think that they would need to trade Sammy Watkins away because no. his deal is guaranteed. Like five, it's a, it's like a one year five million. No, one year six million dollar deal, but five mil of it is guaranteed. Um, so I don't even think they would trade him away, but yeah, adding Julio, he get a thumbs up from us on that one for sure. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> now, definitely. Now, number four, uh, our defensive line. I love a lot of our guys on the defensive line, but they still lack getting to the QB last year. Though we have some studs, is it weird to you that we didn't add new blood, especially on the defensive line, to maybe improve in that area? Kind of like you were saying in one previous video, we have to do crazy stunts in order to get to the quarterback. When I feel like we should be able to have people to get, get to the quarterback on their own. If our talent didn't change from the previous year and our vets are getting older, don't you expect the same results? That's a very good question. And my response to that would be Matabike. Uh, with Matabike, he started off slow, but especially toward the end of the year, he started coming on strong. And he's a name that I, a lot of times I forget about um, because I automatically think about the Monstars, about uh, Brandon Williams, Calais Campbell, and Derek right. Wolf. Right. And Matabike, he slips my mind a lot. And that's, it's no offense to him, but that's just me being forgetful. Right. Um, so I think with the Ravens, with Matabike, it's going to be big for him. They still do have Broderick Washington. Too. Broderick Washington, it's a lot of unknown with him. But I think the Ravens are, are really banking on Matabike. And not only potential, because he showed stuff last year. Like, it's not just potential. It's not like, oh, we hope this guy can be good. Or we hope he can get interior pressure. We hope he can be disruptive. He showed you he can be those things last year. But now you just want to see it consistently. And now him being in his second year, he could possibly get uh, that an expanded role. I uh, definitely. Uh, when we drafted uh, Metabuke, I don't know if anybody remember now. When we drafted Metabuke, I said this guy is going to be it. This guy is <laughs> going to be it because you can just see it. Like he just he shoots off on the film. It's like he's a man of much boys. And then we saw flashes uh, last year. That's a rookie. Like and if you watch the tape, it's like man, they can they can be running a. Uh, 
uh, a stretch play. And he's so fast and physical that he just destroys it. So when Matt Buka is on the field, you can't run stretch plays because he's going <laughs> to run it down. Like It's just like impossible to run stretch plays when Matt Buka is out there. And now he's in his second year. And remember, yeah. as you said, there was no OTAs, none of those things like that. Right. Now he's in his second year. He's got accustomed to the NFL. We're ready for him to take that leap. I really think people need to watch out. Mary Buke is going to have a year. I, I, I want to guarantee you. He can de he's definitely going to have a year. I mean, Wink Martindale is who he is. Mm -hmm. He's going to run his plays the way he runs his plays. As I said in the previous video, he said he doesn't need, quote, unquote, elite pass rushers because he will get players to the ball. So, hey, we have to look at that in that aspect as well. Wink Martindale right. runs his system the way he runs his system. But I do think Meta BK may make him kind of like change those tad bit because he's I think he's just gonna be that elite in the inside. I really do. All right. So we're gonna see, man. And number five, when talking about our edge rushes, and Wink said he'd rather have someone who can cover because he can always get someone to the QB. Uh, that's a lie. <laughs> because if that were the case, <laughs> <laughs> he said, if that were the case, don't you think we'd have a better pass rush last year? How did nobody call him out on that? <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Um, <laughs> I, I think he, it, it's just it's, I think that's really him just putting confidence and trying to boost confidence uh, in the current group of guys. Also, it, it could be a business move, too. It could be a business move to sort of maybe drive some prices down or some veteran pass rush free agents that are out there uh, to where the Ravens could be like, we don't need you. We, we, you would be a luxury, not a necessity. But what, what, <laughs> what do you think about it? <laughs> well, I mean, I get where he's coming from. Mm -hmm. oh, we, got, we got to look at it in its totality, though. Um, we do have a lot of players to actually get to the quarterback, get hits or, you know, get sacks. You know, you have Marlon Humphrey getting sacks. You have Deshaun Elliott getting the sacks. You have the slot corner getting the sacks. So, but as, if you look at it in, I guess, the pass rusher standpoint, it's kind of like, yeah, that's the case. But if you look at it in its totality, Wink does get lots of people to the pass, uh, to the quarterback. So it might not be the pass rushers. See, well, you see where it's like, okay, the stats said the pass rush is not getting there. But if you look at it in this hole, then you may have the cornerback with two sacks this game. You mm -hmm. may have the safety that came in and got a sack. Chuck Clark, Chuck Clark that came in and got a sack. So it comes in a variety of ways. It may not just be specifically from the pass rushers to why things may look a little skewed. But if you look at it in this hole, we do have guys that actually get to the quarterback. And then you have the quarterback that gets the ball out in like 1.5 seconds because they know they're playing with Martindale. And mm -hmm. – they have to get the ball out like that. You have no time to hold the ball. So it's uh, you have to look at it from the, the entire thing. You know, yeah. we're at Baltimore Ravens. We speed you up. We don't allow you to slow down. So you're not going to be holding the ball three or four seconds. It's going to be you got 1.5 seconds because Wink is sending everybody all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Ooh, this next one. Mm. He said, do you, do you think Lamar wants to win bad enough? that he won't break the bank and won't wants to save the salary cap for better talent around him. Now, uh, if you're talking about a, a team friendly deal, I, I would say no. The, the reason being because, and it wouldn't be because he doesn't want to win. Um, but I, I do not agree with the fact that I know a lot of people say, Oh, well, Lamar, he should take a pay cut or well, not a pay cut, but he should take a lower salary or whatnot because he wants to build a team around him. This guy, man, he, what he's done for the team, you can't even, you can't even put that on uh, on a check no. because he not only has got them to a winning franchise again and a competitive franchise again, a playoff franchise again, but he has brought in so much business for the Baltimore Ravens. He's not only uh, a popular face with the Baltimore Ravens, he's one of the most popular faces in the NFL as a right. whole, as a business. Right. This guy is big business. And, and now he's getting his brand deal. He got the deal with Oakley and whatnot. And he, he, uh, he got his clothing line and what. So Lamar, he's also a businessman too. Yeah. And you, you can't be like, the way I look at it is if, if you work at a job, 
you work at a job and you've been putting all this work into your job and you've been putting extra work in and your company has made so much money, not only because of you, but you are a very, very significant reason why the company has made so much money. And then somebody's like, oh, you should, uh, you should take a, a lower pay raise than what you're expected to get so everybody else can get paid too. And it's like, not that it, you got anything against anybody else, but at the same time, you put in so much work and you've gotten here, especially to what your position is as a quarterback. You know, quarterbacks make money and right. they make the most money. Right. So I, I don't I don't think that they should uh, that he should take like a lower salary or whatnot. But I, I do think what they'll do is come up with something to where Lamar gets his money. He gets paid, uh, but it's something to where they can still work around it and, and put pieces around them, too. When I hear that, I set it down right then and there. No. <laughs> Lamar Jackson needs to get everything that he deserved because the Baltimore Ravens knew that they had their guy when he went 7-1. Hmm. So you had then and to now to put players around him. On the offensive side, Baker Mayfield got his players put around here. him. Josh Allen got his guys put around him. So, no, we're not, we're not going to do a pay cut when you had ample time to put guys around Lamar Jackson. So Lamar Jackson has done his job to prove to you that, hey, I, you see what I can do. I am your guy. Get guys around me so we can get over the top. The fact that they, quote, unquote, hasn't done it till, you know done it yet, they've been, but what they've been doing it through the draft instead of going out and signing players, that's not on Lamar. That's not on Lamar. Lamar still needs to get his due diligence. Because we saw the Bills go out there and pay guys. We saw the Browns go out there and pay guys for their guy. Mm -hmm. We need Lamar Jackson to get everything he deserved. No pay cut. Because right. you had your time. You had opportunity to bring guys around him and build around him. You went through the draft a lot, which is understandable. I get it. But Lamar Jackson does not need to take a pay cut at all. Because you had ample time to do that. Lamar Jackson needs to get everything he deserved. Why? Because he's shown that he can win. Right. Without him. <laughs> so pay that man. He deserves it. There's no pay cut. No. Maneuver your cap. Do whatever you have to do to get those guys. We've seen what the Chiefs have done. We've seen them do some Houdini things with their cap. <laughs> so you're so you not telling me that the Baltimore Ravens with Ed DeCosta and those guys cannot make some maneuvers, make some moves as well, and pay Lamar exactly what he deserved on his second contract and – still get guys because on your second contract they always tell you when you give a son a big contract do not take no cuts at all mm -hmm. not the first not the first one any not the first one at all right get your money so and you have to understand the baltimore is supposed to uh should have known that as well and put guys around him like they did josh allen and those guys but so no, no pay cut for me yeah and and something that you said about the salary cap uh it gives me a nice reminder too that um, the salary cap is getting ready to shoot up. Okay. Things are getting back to normal again. So uh, stadiums are going to be filled up again. So that's a lot more money for the NFL. Um, so things, th the salary cap is going to shoot back up. Right. So even if you do pay Lamar in a couple years, his deal is going to end up looking like a, a deal or a steal in a couple years. How the salary cap shoots up and the, the QB continues to shoot up as far as uh, their pay. Exactly. Now, number seven. Which rookie do you feel has the biggest bust potential? And he said, OA doesn't count. Um, I, when I think of a, a bust in the NFL, I think of somebody who was picked very high, but they did not live up to that potential. Um, so the only guys who the Ravens picked high, since they didn't even have a second round pick, it was Rashad Bateman and Adafe away. Right. Uh, Adafe away is coming to a team where they're known for defense. Well, I mean, now over the past couple of years, they've been known for offense too, but right. they, they, they know how to make some defensive players. Right. Um, so I don't even think it's going to be him. Um, and, and with Rashad Bateman, the Ravens, they, it seems like they learned a bit. Cause like, like you talked about in the, uh, the video that where you spoke about Julio Jones, uh, where they, they've learned to not put so much pressure on those rookie receivers to be the guy. Uh, with Hollywood, he had when he was a rookie, there was Willie Sneed. Uh, there was Seth Roberts as well. So he has some guys around him that have been in the game for a little bit. 
Um, and and now with Rashad Bateman, he comes in. There's Hollywood, who's been around for a couple of years, and they added Sammy Watkins too. Uh, and we'll see if they add anybody else. Hopefully Julio, but we'll see. Um, so I I don't really think that either one of the two are gonna be a bust. Um, because I think the Ravens are putting them in a situation to where there won't be as much pressure on them as they normally would. Uh, right. And especially with Adafi away, I, I don't think the Ravens are done. I, I wouldn't mind them, but I, I don't think the Ravens are done at, an, uh, done at the pass rush position. So we'll see how it goes. Um, to piggyback off that, like you said, um, when I look at biggest bust potential, I look at where you will draft it and people will draft it high because – if you're drafted in third and fourth round, then you're not, you're the, it can't be a big bust potential because you don't really have that much. Um, nobody's looking at you to come out and be the GOAT, you know, coming out if you're drafted third, fourth, fifth round. Mm -hmm. It's usually when you're drafted in the first round. Um, so, you see, I guess it has to be between Bateman and uh, Owe because there's the only two that was drafted high. If I had to choose between the two, well, he said Owe was out of the picture. So there's no way to really answer that because it only leaves you leaves you with one guy, and that really wouldn't be fair, I guess. It's like you're unanimous at this point. So, mm. all right. And then the last question that he had, he said, "What do you think Eric DeCosta's best pick has been since he has taken over?" And he said, "Hope you have more than a solid day." So, what has been Eric DeCosta's best draft pick since he took over the Ravens? Um. Let me see, because I got one off the top of my head, but let me just look at all the people who he picked so far. So let me look at Ravens 2019 draft class. All right, so his draft draft class since 2019, uh, it was Hollywood Brown, Jalen Ferguson, Miles Boykin, Justice, Justice Hill, Ben Powers, Eamon Marshall, Daylon Mack, and Trace McSorley. Out of that class, I would pick Hollywood 2020. Patrick Queen, J.K. Dobbins, Matabike, Devin Duvernay, Malik Harrison, Tyree Phillips, Ben Bredesen, Broderick Washington Jr., James Prochet, Geno Stone. Oof, them first five, even six picks, man. Patrick Queen, J.K. Dobbins, Matabike, Duvernay, Malik Harrison, and Tyree Phillips. They were all contributors, man. Um, you could, like, pick your poison with that one, especially at the top two between right. Patrick Queen and J.K. Dobbins. But, man, they've all had, like, a significant impact. Uh, and then, this, well, this year, you can't tell. But, um, mm, wow. I would say, uh, I'll, would I, I'll pick one from each. But with uh, with 2020, it's, it's hard. Because with 2019, it'd be Hollywood Brown. But 2020, um, whether it's Patrick Queen or J.K. Dobbins, one of those two. But they, I mean, man, I don't Are even we, know. Can we, go, can we go off potential? Okay, let's do that. Cause, I mean, you still can be the one of the best picks, but can we use also use potential in that matter? Like that they're training up, and I think that this is going to be the best pick out of you know the group. Um, if I'm going to use potential as well, um, I really want to go with these between Matabuka and Harrison because I actually I actually like Harrison. I, I love Patrick Quinn. Like I love Patrick Quinn. But and I but Harrison just he's like this he's like that guy that he has it all. He's if people go back and watch him against the Colts, take on the Colts, uh I forget his name, the guard. Um Nelson. Nelson. Yeah. yeah. He was throwing Nelson out of the way their entire game, destroying him and hitting the running back and just or just clogging up the clogging up the lane. Like he was that's like that's the best guard in the league. And he was manhandling him. I think people overlook Malik Harrison because he's 6'5", 250 pounds. But he runs like a running back, and he's a very good cover linebacker. And I think he's going to be the best linebacker this year on our team. So it's between Matabuka and Harrison because I do think Matabuka is going to end up being a very good all-around D lineman because he definitely has the goods. But I'm going to go with Malik Harrison as the uh, best pick for me. I think that guy's going to be special. And it's going to be this season. <laughs> I'm DT Bids, you know, like and subscribe to my channel. You know, whenever something drops, I'm going to drop. And I like to give my thoughts on things that some people may not uh, even notice at the time. But sometimes it comes true, sometimes it don't. But hey, <laughs> that's me. I <laughs> uh, appreciate you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good oh, yeah. one.